There are just certain people that you look at them and you assume that they're basically, for all intents and purposes, WWE lifers. They'll never work anywhere else again. They'll certainly not work anywhere else in terms of professional wrestling. Like, they're in it for life. Hunter. He married into it. He ain't going anywhere. Taker. Like, even though he's retired now. He'll always do business with WWE, would think, and especially as long as the old man lives. There's too much loyalty and mutual admiration. Um, he'll always be there. Like Kane, he's been there for so damn long. And when you think about it, well over two and a half decades. And again, even though I know he's retired now, you, you get the general gist of things. Like there's too much loyalty there on both sides. Glenn Jacobs, it'd be incredibly unlikely to ever see him as a wrestler with another company, especially now that he's dove into politics. And I certainly think that held true for a lot of us when it came to the big show. Paul White, you're talking about a guy that he got his first major break in the mid-90s in WCW, eventually jumped ship to the WWF in February of 1999, where he has stayed ever since. For over two decades, there are people that have been wrestling fans for a few years that don't ever remember or don't ever know about the Big Show other than him being the Big Show in WWF slash E. They don't remember the Giant. They hardly get the reference to Captain Insano shows no mercy. All of that. But you know, here is a guy that I'll admit, I never anticipated going anywhere else. I didn't see why he would. I didn't see why Vince would ever want to have him out of the fold. I just felt like one of those mutually beneficial type of relationships that both parties, both sides would want to continue to foster, nurture, and cultivate for many years to come. And then I logged into the interwebs yesterday and I got a very, very striking reminder of one absolute truth when it comes to professional wrestling. Never say never. Because these people that you think have that undying loyalty, these people that you think are lifers or they're too much cool of the Kool-Aid drinkers and they're not going anywhere. You remember after a while that for somebody like a Paul White, money talks and all the other bullshit walks. So yeah, apparently Paul White is elite. This feels like it came out of nowhere. This feels like a major significant surprise that Paul White, formerly known as The Big Show, will be joining AEW and apparently he's going to be a commentator on their new Monday YouTube show and at some point in time going to be some form of in-ring competitor. Damn. Like when I initially saw it, I thought it was a joke. Like we see sometimes different people put up their, this person's elite, this person is elite. I'm thinking, oh, they're just being smart asses. Big Show wouldn't go to All Elite Wrestling. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> yes, he did. And man, I'll say this. Trying to figure out whether this is a good move or just a dumb move. And I'm curious what you guys think and I want to hear it and see it in the comments section. I'm not sure what to make out of this. Because on the one hand, you're talking about a guy who was a star for sure. You can't take that away from him. Here's a guy that had longevity and relevancy in the industry that so many people don't have. Here's a guy that certainly represents something different from your company. And don't just go saying, well, he's another washed up old has-been, that, but he represents something certainly a hell of a lot different than what you got on the main active roster. Here's a guy that understands the importance of character 
and storytelling and actually working veteran hand, veteran presence guy that's main evented WrestleMania has done, you know, damn near everything you could do in the world of wrestling and especially the world of WWE, world champion, tag champion, mid card champion. You could go on and on and on and on and heel and face 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 over and over and over and over and over again. So there's certainly a logic to bringing a guy like this in because he could be a different type of presence from a mentality standpoint, from a mindset standpoint that frankly I think that all elite wrestling desperately needs. They don't need these match and move marks that sit there in their echo chamber of Meltzer and sitting there going, nah, nah, move, move, nah, nah, high spot, high spot, nah, nah, match, match, move, move. Because that's all they're thinking about and they're never going to grow their product and get bigger. And as much as they might sit there and say, we only want to appeal to the hardcore fans, bullshit. You want to make as much money as you possibly can. Like you want to continue to grow and expand your brand. Why would you limit yourself? You know, when you think about things like game theory and you talk about whether you're playing a finite game or an infinite game, like either way. It makes no sense to restrict yourself and say, this is all we want to do. That's dumb. And eventually it's going to bite you in the ass. So bringing in somebody like a big show who represents as an on-screen talent, as a wrestler, as a worker, as a mind for the business, representing something vastly different, like that makes an incredible amount of sense to bring them in. And for a Paul White, I believe he lives in Florida. So he doesn't have to go far to appear there in Jacksonville. You know, here's a chance to get some more long-term certainty from a financial aspect. Because if he wasn't liking what WWE was bringing to the table, they really weren't offering him much. And AEW was offering him something financially and giving him long-term financial security and the opportunity to have another big payday over the next few years. Then who are any of us to begrudge him? Because he's earned that right. If somebody's willing to pay it, then by God, he should take it if that's what he wants to do. So it's certainly beneficial to him. And to sit there and say, well, you know, this is just kind of sad and pathetic that AEW is bringing in a WWF, WWE guy. Well, you know, that shit happens. You know what I mean? Like, these guys move back and forth between places. Like we got it. We got to get past that mindset. We really do. It's more about what you do with them once they get there. You know what I mean? And there are criticisms to be had about that. Like if you only focus on the forty plus or fifty plus crowd, you know you got problems. That's fair. That's valid. But just because he was at WWE for two plus decades doesn't automatically make it a bad thing to bring a guy like Paul White in. I just can't see where you could really, really criticize this too much until I think about some of what this represents. Of all the people you're going to bring in, you're going to bring in Paul White. And one of the things you're going to have him do is be a commentator and not on your main show, but on one of your stupid YouTube shows. What? What? What the hell are you doing? I'm sure you'll work him into being a wrestler at least some of the time and you'll figure out some stuff with him, but what the hell are you doing? You don't bring in a guy like Paul White to stick him on your damn YouTube show. That's stupid. That's like a dumb dick trophy signing that won't pay off for you. And I compare that somewhat similarly. Any Yankees fans might remember the signings of Matt Suey and Contreras all those years back. Like those are trophy signings that the Yankees really didn't need and frankly, in terms of championships, didn't get a whole lot of payoff out of them. But they did them nonetheless. But here you look at this guy and you're saying, of all the things you could do with him, you're gonna bring him in in part to be a commentator? And again, not on Dynamite apparently, on your YouTube show, WTF. And then the other thing that really concerns me about this is AEW has a sizable, significant roster bloat problem. You got too many damn guys, too many damn gals. 
And you can sit there and say, well, they have AEW Dark, and they're going to have the Monday show, and they're going to have all of this and all of that. No! you got to realize the EVPs, the ones in charge, don't know what the fuck they're doing. And as a result, what happens, you get this collection of way too many bodies that they feel guilty about not featuring them consistently on television. So they're always rotating people in and out, in and out, in and out. So very few actually get a consistent shine to the point where they're actually going to be relevant to the point where they can actually be a big deal. They've just got too many damn people on their roster. And now you go and you spend more money to bring another guy in and you know he's not signing for small money. If he's going to do it, he's going to make it worth his while. So you know Paul White got a sizable payday out of this and you could say, well, uh, Tony Khan pulls out of his daddy's checkbook and it's pretty limitless in terms of resources. Yeah, to a degree, he's, they're, they're a billionaire family, yes. Um, but even that, can have some restrictions at some point in time in terms of how much you're willing to invest in the product and how much sense it makes from a business standpoint in terms of how much you're going to invest in order to be able to turn a profit. Like It just seems really weird that you would bring him in now when admittedly it's been kind of weird how you've been featuring Sting. Like you've got a bunch of older established names. How many do you need to have? And then even thinking about it from a wrestling standpoint, like admittedly, I think it would be great to have him in a different place outside of the WWE scope where you could feature him as a little bit of a bigger deal, but you're also bringing him in now where you're going to want him to put people over. And I look at this and I, 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 I worry significantly that you're going to make this type of investment in a Paul White and you're not going to get nearly the return that you fucking should. Because why in the hell should you have any confidence at all that this company would know how to book a giant? And not just any giant, a giant that you could say in terms of all-around skill is the greatest giant in the history of wrestling. Andre was, is, and always will be the biggest star in terms of giants ever. Beyond dispute. And you could talk about guys like Vader and so forth. And those are great names, legends, Hall of Fame type. When you look at the ability to work, the athleticism, the size, mic skills, ability to be different types of characters, ability to inject humor, storytelling, all of those things that make up professional wrestling, Paul White's the greatest in terms of an actual giant talent of all time, especially when you factor in longevity. And that, again, that's not disrespecting the Yoko or a Vader, or an Andre, or Big John Studd, or anything like that, but the reality is, like, look at the longevity and shelf life of his career. As a pure talent, not as a draw, because that's always going to be Andre, in terms of star power, it's always going to be Andre, but in terms of, a, like, an all-around talent, he's the greatest giant that his wrestling business has ever seen. This company can't even figure out how to book guys like Powerhouse Hobbs and Brian Cage effectively to where they really stand out. You look at a guy like Luchasaurus, who should be a massive star with the kids, and they don't know what the fuck they're doing with him. So why in the hell would I have any confidence whatsoever that they would know what in the hell to do with a 7-foot, foot, almost 500-pound giant like Paul White? That makes no sense. But in the grand scheme of things, does it really matter that much? It's not our money they're wasting. It's their own. It's not our money they're spending. It's their own. He maybe wrestles some. He does some commentary, etc. Like, is it really that bad? No. Is it anything that's going to dramatically shift the landscape for this company? Oh, hell no. Does it, did it make sense to ultimately bring them in? Like how much did they pay them compared to how much they're expecting to get and they're going to get out of them without seeing contract figures, which really frankly aren't any of our business. It's hard to know that. I guess in time we can figure that out. It just feels really weird that you go and sign a guy like this and your thought, first thought process is, let's make him a commentator on our B YouTube show. Not even the A YouTube show. The B YouTube show. If anything, that just points to the clowns running AEW and their approach and their philosophy.
in theory, not a bad signing, but I got to admit, I have significant hesitation about how well this is going to pan out for them.